So you want to start a brand new scout unit. Let's talk about it. Hey, Scouter Stan. Want to talk about starting up a brand new scout unit. This is something that a lot of people are interested in doing. But before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about making Scout fun. If you're already with a unit, you know what I'm talking about. You want to keep that momentum going. So let's do our Scout Master or Dad joke. Did you know that dogs cannot operate an MRI machine? But cats can. Oh, that's awful. Alrighty. Now that you're recovered, let's talk about new units. New units start off with the desire to provide scouting for needy youth. Youth that need the program. That's one of the reasons that a lot of units start up. And I'm going to put down below some notes. Okay, so go ahead and check those out. There's also links down there for the national... Uh, website that has all of that information in it. Now, before the the pandemic that we've all gone through, a lot of that has already been spelled out for recruiting. There's a lot of ways to recruit. There's there's different things going on in recruitment. Now, the pandemic unfortunately eliminated a lot of units. So there are chartered organizations out there wanting to restart a new unit. They might have all the equipment, all the tents, the, the Pinewood Derby track, all of that thing, the flag, all that stuff. Only they don't have the leaders of the youth to actually have a unit. So let's talk a little bit about that process. Now when we talk about engaged charter organizations, we want to make sure that they are able to uphold their end of their commitment. A lot of times that has to do with having a meeting place, uh, uh, different um, ways of recruiting leaders and going through the vetting process so that they are engaged in their unit. So it's critical to have one that's active. The second big hurdle that a lot of new units have to face is leadership. You need at least five, and three of those are what they call the key three. That is really important. Now, these are fully trained, youth protection trained, and trained for their basic positions. So they, they can go through the, the other training as they go through their first year. That's totally fine. But these adults need to commit to going to the meetings, to actively doing the job that they're doing. There's five of them that are critical. The first three that are critical, what we call the key three, is the charter organization representative. They're the ones that are going to be, in essence, the owner of the unit. They need to be involved in what the unit is doing. The second major position is the committee chair. The committee chair actually runs the committee meeting. They make the minutes, they make sure that all of the activities are, are monitored and that the leadership is, is heard. So these are things that they do and they go through all that training. And that's those are the first two big ones. The last one, not the least, but the last one is the unit leader. Now that in a Cub Scout pack would be the Cub Master. Then you, in a troop, it would be known as the Scoutmaster and so on. So that is the uh, unit leader. Those are the key three. And of that, there are two more, minimum, two more that need to be involved. Now, these are usually parents that come forward and they fill all five positions. Now, usually with the parents, if it's a pack, it's assistant uh, den leaders, den leaders. Uh, with a troop, it could be an assistant scout master. It could be committee people. So there's tons of positions out there. So, But the minimum is five. You can't register 
without five adult leaders. Now, another big thing that a lot of people don't think about is a unit commissioner. Now, normally with a new unit, you have a new unit commissioner that's appointed by the district commissioner or even the council commissioner could be involved. Now, if they don't appoint somebody, they can always fill in that particular position. And their job is to make sure that they give the right tools to the leadership to do the job. So that's the thing. They want the unit to succeed. That's their goal. That's the big thing. Now, finally, the last part is 10 youth that are going to register as scouts. Now, whether it be Cub Scouts, uh, Troop, uh, Scouts BSA, you know, it really depends. But you need at least 10 to have a good functioning unit. There are some cases well, they will accept less, but 10 is the recommended amount. You have to get clearance below 10. 10 is the way you need to get your new unit up and rolling. Now think about it. That could be several dens in a Cub Scout pack, or it could be a patrol, all new, of course, but it could be one patrol for a troop. These are the bare minimums. Now there's all kinds of paperwork. I'm going to put a link below in the description that will actually go through uh, the process. There's a book, uh, a PDF, that you can go through uh, for a new unit and learn all of the ins and outs of starting up a brand new unit. So and as time goes on, I update the, the links. So if you're not watching this when it comes out on Wednesday, that's okay. It might be something new, so I'll put it on there. <laughs> Keep up the good work. I know you do good work. And this is for our youth here in America. We need this. America needs scouting more than ever before. So keep up that good work, and I will see you on the trail.